about a year ago, I read an article in The Observer quoting Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and Bill Gates on the future. And their vision of the future is a scary one, where artificial intelligence has the power. So when Lee Soddle lost in the first round out of five against AlphaGo in January this year, I felt somewhat indifferent. It seemed almost certain that this also be repeated for at least another four times. And we saw the first time a computer proved to be faster and ultimately better than a human at a game. Indeed, from the loss of Kasparov, the, the best chess player in the world, to Deep Blue, a chess playing engine, it seemed that computers would only become stronger. And fittingly, one might conjecture that humans will become obsolete for complex tasks. Terrifying indeed. I guess what could only make things better would be to hear some more positive thoughts from someone more profound in the scientific community. Someone like Elon Musk. You know, surely Musk would have something good to say at the prospect of artificial intelligence. Well, in 2015, Elon Musk called the prospect of artificial intelligence our greatest existential threat. So in fact, not only did he reiterate what I thought in a broad sense, but he went even further to say that we would be obsolete. Great. Okay, maybe that was a joke. You know, maybe he just humorously experimented on me. Stephen Hawking, please help me. Success in creating artificial intelligence would be the biggest event in human history. Initially, when I heard this interview, I felt enlightened, hopeful, and excited. But then thunderstruck. Unfortunately, it might also be the last. And now this made me feel even more ridiculous. Hurt, honestly. Is it true that all human-specific skills would be, would be replaced by super-intelligent computers? Well, today, I believe the answer is no. And I realized this after looking back at my time with geometry. Admittedly, I was always a number algebra type guy. I love numbers, I love maths. I think my parents realized that early on when I was doing negative number addition at three years old. So my various schools put me com in competitions and not surprisingly, I liked it. By the age of 13, I was competing in all major mathematical Olympias across Australia, managed most of the time to climb the podium. But there was something I just didn't like about competitions and that was the time factor. People would only try to solve problems in a given amount of time, and that meant certain aspects of the mathematics weren't really respected, particularly understanding. Still, my national director encouraged me to pursue competitions and put me in training for the Australian Olympiad team. And there, I discovered that I just wasn't good at geometry. I was and still am bad at drawing, and that made me scared of the subject. For instance, how could I possibly prove that the three points lie on a line when my lines look like circles. You know, sound possible, no? <laughs> so, I worked on as many geometry problems as I could to maximize my chances. And there, I discovered the unexpected beauty in geometry. Not in the drawing part, of course, but in the way certain mathematical concepts could be explained visually. Geometry is everything around us, so it makes sense that we evolve to understand things better through visualization. By seeing the structure of a problem, we can turn equations into shapes. And in a broad sense, this makes us understand the problem quicker. For example, if I were to ask a four-year-old to prove that the sum of all numbers is a square number, they probably wouldn't understand me. But if I showed them this diagram, well, this animation, sorry, where we see that every new level, we keep adding an odd number of dots, and that these dots formulate to make a square each time, then it makes sense that the sum of odd numbers is a square number. So you can imagine my excitement when I realized that parallel lines do in fact meet at a point at infinity. So geometry can help explain these seemingly complex scenarios. Due to this, I started loving geometry so much and began to solve the hardest problems I could find on a math forum. And this is where I met Zooming. Zooming is 18, lives in California, and loves geometry as well. After eight months of Gmail chatting, Zooming and I proved a paper in the International Journal of Geometry where we proved our theorem. Now, the next sentence becomes quite difficult. But our theorem says a point P 
lies on isomorphically equivalent isopivotal cubics in its pedal triangles. But to make it simple, our theorem relates points, triangles, and isopivotal cubics together and immediately gives one a direction for a solution. Because in geometry, where the plane is infinite, where there's so many starting points, getting started is always the hardest part. So, but here's an analogy, just so it's clear. You remember that maze game you used to play as a child where you try to get that ball into the center of the maze? This theorem helps you find the right direction to get there by eliminating the wrong ones. So I was unbelievably excited when we finally proved this theorem. After months of chatting with failing ideas, we finally did it. It seems weird now that many times I was tempted to quit and focus on my studies. In fact, once I even tried to cheat, I put my shapes into equations, put those equations into a computer, because obviously a computer could do with ease, right? Well, so I thought, the computer timed out. Zooming and I were on our own in the end. What saved the day was a roundabout approach that evolved to finding two new problems and proving that they were equivalent. It's probably the best experience in my life so far. Interestingly, Zooming and I spent day and night talking, more time together than a married couple. So who is Zooming? Well, I don't know. We've never met, nor Skyped. So our story shows that with the power of technology, people can relate together without prejudices such as race, age, and gender, and solely focus on important work. This allows people to form a connection purely between minds, and I believe this notion of academic globalization should be reinforced through schooling, as it allows Zooming and I to utilize our creativity in the best possible way. So well, in fact, that problems involving isopivotal cubics can be solved faster than using a computer to do the algebra. Hence, I now realize there's a certain quality in every human that defines us. This quality cannot be replicated by a computer, and that quality is creativity, human creativity. It was this creativity that allowed Lee Settle to be the computer in round four. It was this creativity that allowed Kasparov to be the computer many times, and it is this creativity that allows us to see the beauty in mathematics and science. It's not always about finding a solution, but finding the shortest solution, a solution that best relates things together, and a solution that shows understanding of the nature of the problem. Unfortunately, I believe our education system does not understand this, Kids with extra energy and a desire to learn aren't really being supported nor encouraged. An example of this is the fact that we had to hide our age. We found that in previous journals, our age became an issue. So in our final submission to the International Journal of Geometry, they had no idea how old we were. And so they called us professors. But I'm not a professor, so actually I was going to send them a picture of my granddad in case they asked for verification. You know, someone more mature, but I'm really glad they didn't. Anyway, despite this, my parents supported and encouraged my talents, helped me utilize them to my maximum potential. So without them, this sim really wouldn't have been possible. I encouraged my talents in maths, swimming, piano, chess, and athletics. And nowadays, I couldn't live without these passions. For me, they work together in harmony. So in the next 15 years, we should focus on improving the decaying creativity that exists in our younger generations, because it is this creativity that allows us to see the beauty in mathematics and science, something that I believe a computer could never understand. As my professor told me, creativity is a spark that cannot be governed by a set of rules. Now, this makes me feel enlightened, hopeful, and excited for the future ahead of us. We need to foster our creativity, because it is one of the few features that will make us stand out in the robotic age. In the words of Lee Settle, Computers will never understand the beauty of the game as us humans do. Let's keep it that way. Sachons garder notre humanité. Thank you.